Welcome back. We are so excited to be with you once again. We hope you have enjoyed our first three episodes. And this week, we're getting right into it like we have been. But this week, we're talking about someone a little different. These are some of the uh, the funniest stories, in my opinion. The funniest stories. This is Drunk Tank. So we're going to be talking about our funniest wildest worst <laughs> worst drunk stories that we can recall the good thing about this one is uh there's a few pictures that we'll be posting up uh within the video for y'all to check out yeah there's definitely a few pictures memes for sure oh yes we love going. making memes as soon as i got introduced and i might add i'm probably very crude at it <laughs> cutting things out posing them you know pasting them but i think they're fucking hilarious oh my god anytime something happens i'll go make a meme and i'll either post it online to embarrass the person or i'll send it to them directly oh my gosh he's been blocked so many times by like his own friends 100 100 percent. but yeah i've received memes quite too often i would say oh yeah you, you'll hear about that a little this uh, later this episode <laughs> for sure so let's get right into it with our so, drunk tank. We were talking about all the times we've been drunk, and uh, it just so happens this week that our cousin that lives in town, he's been coming over to hang out. Well, I've had quite a few drunk stories with him. Uh, his name's Joey. Joey's my older cousin. He's, let me see, eight years older than me. Yep. So we really started hanging out and uh, partying when I was in high school, and he was already college, you know, 24, 25 age. And uh, it was a lot of fun, but as I got, you know... In my prime for drinking, college years, I think he was slowing down. So well, when yeah, we hang he's out, eight years older than me. Yeah, you know, I mean, the story I'm about to tell. I'm 21, 22, and that means he's almost 30. Yeah. Or 30. Yep. So he tries to keep up, and it didn't go too well. Nope. This is a. Uh, we're from San Antonio, Texas, so one of the biggest spring break spots in the entire United States is just four hours away from us yep. in South Padre, Texas. SPI. And um, and our family also, our, our family lives in Brownsville, Texas, which is the most southern point of Texas, and 30-minute drive. Oh, yeah. You're literally 30 minutes and you're there. Yeah, you're you on go the across the bridge and you're there. So this spring break, as many spring breaks, we spent in South Padre Island. Uh, I was 21, 22, and my cousin Joey, his family owns a condo there. So that year, we stayed there and we're like, hell yeah. You know, we didn't have to pay all our monies for booze and partying. Let's have a great time. So a couple days in, we we're partying, drinking, and we spend all day at the beach, get plastered, you know, go back to the room, smoke a little bowl or five. Or five. <laughs> uh, take a little power nap and get up ready to go to the clubs at night. Well, the clubs in South Padre for spring break are insane. They have a lot of celebrities, a lot of good artists, rappers, musicians come in. and yeah. they, they, they always either. have good concerts. Yeah, they play there and it's awesome. And every single club there is packed extremely packed and the clubs there hold hundreds and hundreds of people mm -hmm. well we happened to go to a little bit smaller one and i can't recall the exact name i want to say it was a uh, coconut beach coconut jack something like that but this bar was right on the water on the bay side and it was a two-story deck bar so you know deck wood everywhere and in the top were uh, like tiki huts like similar to what we have the bar if you're watching at home on yeah. youtube we have a tiki hut for our bar and you know it was really cool good vibe uh as we got there downstairs was packed so we immediately go upstairs check it out and by chance uh the group um there was a group at a table that was leaving so we grabbed that table we got a you know we got a table we're not standing in the middle just squished yeah or just standing at the bar or something exactly here. we got a place to sit down comfortable yeah hell yeah great night drinking you think you'd be there all night oh yeah our plan was 100 <laughs> percent stay till two close this bitch down Go back to the condo, drink some more. Again, lame. Bars in Texas close it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's probably, I don't know if we could handle Honestly, it down here. Honestly, it's definitely for the best for Texas, Yeah, I Texas, would say. we drink a lot, and I can't imagine four in the morning here. Also, side note, um, obviously with all of the coronavirus stuff going on, it's pretty serious. And in Texas, 
there's been a meme going around that's like no open container law like bars close at two blah 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 oh, yeah. and then coronavirus hit which it's no joking matter i'm not saying that but this meme is hilarious and then it says coronavirus hits for texans here you go you're to go pitcher of margarita yeah things. that is illegal in texas that's uh, never been a thing you cannot get to go liquor uh myself bartending plenty of people would come and be like hey let me get that to go and we're like uh, I can't, can't do, that. do that. They don't understand that. Every state's yeah. different. The liquor laws are definitely different. There is a drive through bar, though. Yeah, beer and all. Yes. Beer and all. Yeah. There's a couple other ones. Uh, they give it to you in a sealed container. Oh, and then with a okay. straw stick it out, and they just put a plastic sealed plastic bag so over it. So that way it. it's not open container. Yeah, exactly. Because oh, okay. there's a, technically a seal you have to Yeah, break. okay. A plastic bag. Sense. But yeah, so Texas goes hard drinking. Everyone knows it. That's why that oh, whole thing sure. came out. Yes. Yeah, and it's pretty funny. But yeah, so, okay, so you guys are at the this The night's bar. going well. We're drinking, taking shots, having a blast. It's spring break. And, um, you know, it's it's not too late. And I'd say 12, 12.30. You still got an hour, hour and a half to drink. And I noticed my cousin Joey, and we're sitting at a round table. And he's kind of in the corner. And he turns around away from the table, and he's up to something. He's doing <laughs> something. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with You're Joey? What is he doing? Joey. <laughs> yes, definitely. Red flag right red there. Flag, red Joey flag was the red flag. of the night. Yes. <laughs> So I lean over and kind of, you know, reach around him, not reach around like that way, reach around <laughs> to see what he's doing. And he has a beer pitcher mm -hmm. and he's gagging mm -hmm. and he's starting to vomit into an empty beer pitcher. Oh my God. So I got to act quick. I asked my friend to get up and take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> not get up and leave. Get up and take a no, picture. No, capture right this now. moment forever. <laughs> Picture's worth a thousand words. Those of you watching on YouTube. We'll put up the picture right now. I yeah, I saw that we'll picture definitely for put sure. It up. It's hilarious. That one also became a meme. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so he's vomiting in this picture and he's throwing up and throwing up and it's filling up. And I'm like, okay, Joey's fucking fucked up. He's yeah. sick. We need to go. Not only have you guys been drinking all day, you guys were drinking all day at a beach. So like in the sun, sun dehydrated. Like, yeah. Yeah. Not good. So I alert everyone, hey, Joey's fucked up. We need to get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Everyone's cool. You know, the few people go up there, pay the tabs, and I lean over to Joey. I was like, hey, Joey, we need to get the fuck out of here. Throw that out. Get rid of it. Yeah. So I'm expecting him, like a decent human being, <laughs> to stand up and, in my opinion, just throw the entire pitcher in a trash can. Yeah, There's absolutely. There's big Why drum trash cans everywhere. Why would again? <laughs> yeah, they're barrel trash cans everywhere. Just fucking throw it away. Yeah. And his drunk ass looks at me with his dazed, confused look. <laughs> You know, deer in a headlights look. Well, okay. And he takes the fucking pitcher and on the floor, remind you, we're at a deck bar with, with spacing. Wooden slats yeah, with and... wooden slats in between, you know, spacing in between them. And he pours it on the floor. And I already see it seeping <gasps> through. So I'm like, okay, we need to get the fuck out of here right, right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. So we get up. And we're going to the stairs, and as we're just starting to hit the stairs, we can hear the screaming <gasps> and the yelling <laughs> from the first floor. Ah, what the fuck? What the? You know, it's just chaos. I cannot imagine. It was disgusting. Oh, my God. Can you imagine being one of those No, people? and see, the thing is, downstairs, like I said, spring break in a club, they're so it's packed, packed like sardines, they can't people run. People can't even move, yeah. They can't run away from it. As we're going down the stairs, we can finally see, and it's just dripping <gasps> down like ooze. Like that Nickelodeon show back in the day, getting slimed. They, <laughs> it was disgusting. And it's just falling and dripping on people. And, you know, half the people are fucked up, don't know what it is, but then they hear the other people screaming and yelling and like, what, what, what? And it's obviously. It's yeah, I'm sure at vomit. first they probably thought like, oh, it's beer or some kind of alcohol. But once you see it or feel it, it or does smell not it, feel or smell, smell it. It's all in the girl's hair <laughs> dripping on you. Yeah, oh my God. it was bad. It, like, you know. Obviously, everyone started screaming and yelling upstairs, but as long as we keep walking, they didn't know it was us. Yeah, yeah. Specifically, Joey that did this. Yeah, exactly. So we cut the fuck out of there, went back, <laughs> drank the rest of the night, but I'll, I will never forget that. And especially because we got the picture. Why he's throwing up into yeah, the picture? Yeah, you have the Okay, so the picture, like I said, or like he said, for people on YouTube, we'll definitely put it up. For those of you listening on iTunes... It is a mid-action shot oh, of yeah. Joey. <laughs> it's one of those moments that you needed a camera, and my friend just popped up so quickly and took it. I lean in, throw up, you know, the peace sign. I think oh my girlfriend my times in it. it. I mean, it's perfect, and he's just leaning over, 
vomiting in a pit filling it up. <laughs> so unreal. I feel like Joey really got you into like the whole drinking scene. Oh, for sure, because we're eight years apart. So yeah. as I was hitting middle school, got out of it, starting to get to age where we can hang out. Young high school didn't, but definitely senior year, junior year, 17, 18. Yeah. That's the time where we got to hang out and party. Exactly. And Joey was a frat guy, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. So he partied a ton in college. Yes, for sure. He has some good stories, too. Well, you know what? We'll have my cousin on uh, on here as a guest, and we'll discuss some of his more ridiculous stories in depth with him here. Yeah. So speaking of Joey, there's a more recent story with him. So this fool, (laughs) my beloved cousin, my brother... (laughs) He, uh, as he's gotten older, I would say death. his uh, tolerance has gone down. You know, he still tries to party like he's in his oh, 20s, but yeah. I'm 31, like so he's, he's about party. to be 40 this year. I'm sure if we like brought a keg in one day with him, he'd be like, keg stand. And it's like, Joe, you can't do a keg stand. Come on. He, w- he would. He would he attempt. Would. Yeah. And he would throw up. I've seen him throw up multiple <laughs> times. Uh, so many times. Oh my God. Wait, whenever um, him and his ex mm-hmm. whenever him and his ex lived together actually he would go in the bathroom whenever he had to throw up turn on all the faucets remember oh, he would try to hide it from her he would try to hide it from you too whenever you oh were because we give him shit exactly yeah he He'd did that go multiple in, turn times. on the shower turn on the tub turn on all the things so he could throw up and then his ex would come out and be like oh yeah he's throwing up yeah joey's throwing shit. up like a bitch talk to him like, <laughs> okay gotcha thank you yeah we give each other shit we love each other yeah he's so great. This is just about, I want to say, just maybe four years ago. Three or four years ago. I was going to say, I was definitely in college. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I was still working at the previous bar. Yeah. So one night, actually, I was working happy hour. I had to get off at 8 o'clock, and the night's mine. I'm uh, planning there to stay there with my girlfriend, Kelly, at the time, and we're drinking at the bar. Well, my cousin Joey hits me up. Hey, what are you doing? I was like, hey, I got off shift. I'm uh, just hanging out. We're going to stay here at the bar. And he's like, why don't you come the fuck over here? And I was like, no, dude. Like, what do you mean? What are you doing? He's like, well, uh, I have my daughter in town. And she's in college at the time with some of her friends. And we're drinking and having a little shindig at my house. You know, it's just a little get together. But we're having drinking games and we're having fun. You know, yeah. let's do it. I was like, okay. Um, the only thing is, as you all know from a previous episode, I love my fireball. So I asked Joey, do you have fireball? <laughs> His response was, yeah, actually, I got a couple bottles. I got two. I was like, okay, Kelly and I are in. What do you need? Do you need anything? He's like, just grab more beer. Okay, specifically, he didn't say, I have more bottles. He said, I have more handles. No, you're absolutely correct. He said, I have handles. Handles, yeah. And I was like, okay, but he told me he had a couple. He had two fireballs. I was like, done. We'll fucking be there. Done, yeah. So One one for you, one for Kelly. Oh, yeah, great. Vegas Vegas all over again. (laughs) Shit, no, not that night. Well, awesome. We're in. We drive over there. I stop at the gas station, grab at least a case of beer, and we get there. Hello to everyone. Say hi. Introduce uh, myself to his daughter's friends at the time, the ones that were in college. Mm-hmm. And we hang out with his girlfriend and Joey. And I'm like, hey, Joey, uh, where's, you know, I want a couple shots. Where's the booze? And he's like, oh, it's all in the kitchen. Fuck yeah. Walk <laughs> into the kitchen. I look around. I open the freezer. You know, I like to keep my fireball in the freezer. A lot of people do, too. Look at the fridge, and I'm not seeing shit. <laughs> hey, Joey, where's the fucking booze? Where, Where are all the, the bottles? Handles? Where are the handles? And he's like, oh, um, they're over there on the island. And I walk over to the island, and he has <laughs> about nine, I want to say there are nine, bottles just sitting there. And they were the fucking 99 cent little <laughs> bottles that you get like at the counter yes. of a liquor store. Nips. nips. Nine nips, shooters, whoever. Calls like what them you whatever. get on a plane, those itty bitty fucking yes. bottles. The they nips. were nine of those with two fucking fireball. Like, <laughs> that's two shots, bro. That's two shots. I was, at first I was pissed, but I was like, oh, he's fucking with me. Joey. Get the fuck in the kitchen. Where and he's like, right there, dude. I told you I had a whole bunch of bottles. Like you said, <laughs> come on, dude. And he's like, uh, I mean, I really wanted y'all to come over. I was like, dude, we were already at the bar oh having fun. God. You just purposely lied to me <laughs> so we come hang out. And he's like, yeah, I'm real sorry. God damn it, give me these fucking fireballs. Take those. Make like one mixed drink with the <laughs> fucking bottles he had. With his handies on handies. Handies on handies, apparently. And I first off, when he told me that, I was like. Don't use that expression, Joey. No, ever. Don't ever don't say, say that say to anybody. Don't say handles and handies. Not, don't say that. 
But he has his own little particular way of latching on to a certain phrase and loving it. Oh my gosh, he does for sure. So what so else happened that night? We fucking drink, whatever. You know, definitely finish all the bottles. And then meanwhile, this same night, <laughs> I get a meme <laughs> that has all of the nips lined up and it's like super zoomed in. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like handies on handies and the next picture zooms out and it's all the nips. <laughs> It's like, it was oh perfect. That's gosh. like how he would send it to me. Yeah, bro, I got bottles. And he sends a picture and it looks like fucking nine bottles, legit. And then you zoom out and they're fucking two <laughs> inches tall. God damn it, Joey. Handies on handies. Yeah. So we definitely finished the liquor. We cut into the beer. We're drinking the beer. We're having a good time. And uh, his daughter and her friends from college, I guess, I mean, they're not big drinkers or they had drinking more before we got there. But they were real drunk. They Maybe were real they fucking drunk. The handies. Oh yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, disappeared. So we're having a good time. We're playing drinking games, and my girlfriend Kelly goes, "Oh, I need to go to the restroom." And we're like, "Okay, cool." So she goes to the restroom, and one of uh, his daughter's friends came up to the table and was trying to play a drinking game with us and chug. And all of a sudden, <laughs> mid chug, it happened. <laughs> Her eyes water. She's like panicking looking around and she runs Darts straight to the, to the restroom <laughs> she opens the door about to projectile vomit <laughs> and my girlfriend kelly's in there screaming no no go to the restroom <laughs> don't throw up on me like shrieking for her life about to get covered in throw up like <laughs> splash like splash mountain over here oh my god so I, I give it to this girl she didn't she held it in <laughs> whips around and makes I mean, like Hussein Bolt sprinting for the kitchen. <laughs> On the other side of the kitchen is the trash can. She runs, 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 and as she's almost making it, or she's covering her mouth, the puke starts to spray through her hands. <gasps> no. Yeah, like, I mean, oh, poor girl. spraying because she's trying to hold it in. She's vomiting, makes it to the trash can, starts throwing up. Well, the fucking trash can has a lid to it where you need to step so it opens yeah well she vomits on it and joey's like open the trash can open the lid why now well <laughs> she's so confused mid vomit freaking out she slams on the pedal and <laughs> the fucking throw up shoots across and splatters all over the wall and then she continues to vomit in the trash can oh my god i mean just real bad That's i mean disgusting. so it's all over the wall dripping down the wall you know a few trails the few feet she didn't make it yeah but i mean that's the kind of shit you get when you hang out with my cousin Honestly, just ridiculousness ridiculous i feel like that stuff just follows him everywhere yeah i was like you know what dude this is karma for how much of a party boy you were in college now that your kids are getting to the age oh, like, now yeah. you're gonna have, and you know what's funny i was like make that dumb girl drink it or not drink it up oh, not drink it <laughs> no. make that dumb girl clean it up and he's like, no. And he's sitting there cleaning it up. I was like, you're cleaning up someone else's vomit, man. Like, no, you should have told him. Learn your lesson. Yeah. If you throw up, you clean it up. Also, you always find a receptacle to throw up in. I know I've had so many friends in college just throw up, like, on floors and stuff. And I'm like, why? Like, what is the issue? I've never <laughs> Don't done Don't you know when you're going to For sure. Like, For sure. I have always made it to a receptacle or I've thrown up outside. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. There you go. If you're outside, you're good. Always make it to a receptacle. <laughs> I don't think I've ever thrown up on something or on anybody. Well, that's another thing. Like, people who throw up in their sleep, which super terrifying. Like, on dangerous, a side right? note, you super joke. dangerous. Yeah. But, like, people who throw up in their sleep and wake up in their vomit, I'm like... Oh, covered in vomit? Oh. I'm like, I actually know a few people that have done that, for sure. What the heck? Like, how did you even do that? You could have died, yeah, first of all. For sure. It's so scary. I know so many people that have done that, but... Speaking of throw up. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Going down this, uh, Speaking this alley. Speaking of throw up. So this uh, last spring break, we went to, I've been to spring break twice in the Dominican Republic in college. It yeah. was junior year and senior year. Um, a ton of us went both times. So my senior year, we went to the Dominican Republic. We're having a great time. Obviously, we went to an all-inclusive resort. That's all we know from going there since we were super, super little. So I finally got my friends hooked on it junior year. They're amazing. For people who don't know, amazing. there are resorts all over the world. And um, if you want to go to a beach, pick the place you want to go to. Pick it for the water. Pick it for the people. Pick it for the uh, the culture. Everything which you want to go and experience is awesome. Um, anything in the Caribbean, 
anywhere around that area. Absolutely. But the all-inclusive resorts, you're going to pay more up front, but then they give you a wristband and everything's fucking free while you're there. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about going to dinner every night, paying and all your drinks. That's all included. You go up to the bar, give me fucking five shots of Fireball, two Rumplemans, and six daiquiris. Boom. It's there. Same thing with the restaurants. You go in the restaurants. There's no cash. You know, you, you can tip, which is always greatly appreciated there, and you should always tip your service people. But, um, they actually tell you not to tip at the that all-inclusive is, that resorts. That is uh, their policy, but, but we do it. if you want to like take care of your people, then you take care of them and they take care of you. For that's, sure. That's how it works at these places. Yeah, you walk out and you go by the pool. They already know you. They already know what you want to drink. I exactly. Mean, it's a blast. So, it's amazing. So we are on spring break this past year in the Dominican Republic. We are at the beach. Obviously, we've been drinking now for probably two days straight, day in, day out. Going oh, yeah. to bed, wee hours of the morning. They actually had a club on this resort too, which was super awesome. Not a normal thing, but a super convenient thing. So we're going to the club, we come back like super late, and then we get up early in the morning because we don't want to waste the day in the hotel room. Yeah. Like, if we're going to sleep, we're going to go sleep on the beach while I get a tan. Yeah, there you go. So we head out to the beach pretty early in the morning. Um, and we're all there. I think some people went to the pool. There's 11 of us. So like half the people went to the pool, half of us are on the beach. And for whatever reason, there's about four or five of us at the time on the beach. And I look over at my friend who just does not look well. (laughs) (laughs) Struggle bus. Not fine over here. (laughs) She's sitting there and she's just like, Presley, I don't feel well. I'm like, okay, well, let's... Yeah, what do you need? Water, food? What do you want? Like, I'll go get you whatever. And there was just no time for even a response. She starts throwing up in the towels on her lap. Gross. And I'm like, okay, that not fine. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, shit, we got a problem. Got it. And she's like, shh, like, don't say anything. And I'm like, okay, okay. Like, there's people around us. Did anyone see where people looking? Nobody saw. It was just me and her at this point in time in our own little bubble. Quick question. Um, some of these resorts are 18 and older. Were y'all at in adults or were you at with kids? No, we were with kids. <laughs> we, we were at a Fuck family it. resort. Okay. So she's literally puking in her lap. Like, there's a towel there. And I, I tell her, I was like, wipe the rest of it off of yourself with the towel real quick. And then we're going to go to the ocean. Hi, Mimosa. And then we're going to go straight to the ocean. Mm-hmm. So she, like, finishes wiping herself up. We go, we book it to the ocean. She leaves the crumpled up towel, like, where she was sitting. Oh, yeah. And then we go. She continues to throw up in the ocean. I'm like, yeah, feed the fishy. Yeah, there you go. It does. Yeah, for sure. By it the way, does. if you ever throw up in the ocean, um, fish swarm to you. Yeah, swarm. swarm. You. Actually, it's as food. scuba divers, this is a random thing. It's also disgusting. But Yes, it definitely is. Uh, they teach you if you're scuba diving and you need to throw up while you're underwater, the thing that fits in your mouth that supplies you with your air is called a regulator. They teach you to throw up through that regulator and then it poosh, disperses into the water. Yeah. So it th- uh, that's never happened to me. I don't know if that's happened to you. No, it hasn't, but that's what they teach you. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm so sorry. Mimosa's uh, freaking out with the... Uh, the most interesting men back there. Oh, yeah. I should probably just notice them. So, anyways, we are in the ocean now. <laughs> She's throwing up. I am now starting to gag because I am already not fine. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I. Uh, it's rough. When someone throws up around you, it's... Honestly... If you have a weak stomach, it's... I have, yeah. And I have never had a weak stomach except for around throw up. But in high school, or not in high school, in college, I got a lot better because I was working in hospitals in hospital, and yeah. I was around it a lot more. So I got a lot better with it, but I was already super hungover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just hearing somebody gag and then like watching it, I was like, okay, la, 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 like literally the whole time. I was like, let me know when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> so then she finishes. Okay, great. We go back to the beach. I'm like, hey, guys, let's go to the pool. (laughs) Yeah. Let's get out of this area. So we grab most of our stuff and go to the pool and meet our other half of our friends. Um, And we get my friend some water. Yeah. (laughs) We go hang out. help her out a little bit. And um, everyone else is like, oh, did you leave our stuff on the beach? And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. We could only, like, grab so much, but we wanted to come tell you guys. So they left to go get the rest of the items on the beach. 
Well, they come back in stitches. They are just cracking <laughs> up. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Well, one of the guys was picking up all the things. And obviously, and at these resorts, you only get two towel cards. So you can only get two towels. And then you have to like return those towers t- towels to get new ones. Yes. Yeah. So it's important that we all had our towels. So this guy sees the towel on the ground that had just been thrown up in. Oh, and it's all like crumpled, bundled it's up? It's all bundled in a little ball. So you can't tell anything had just happened. Surprise! <laughs> so he picks it up, like picks up a corner of it, <laughs> and it all falls out <laughs> of the towel. And he just yells, what is this atrocity? <laughs> <laughs> atrocity like who did it and it's just <laughs> slushing off of it Blech. it's just a towel holder <laughs> oh my god so they come back and they tell us this story and my friend is looking at me like oh, don't, don't sell me out don't, don't sell me anything. out and i'm dying laughing because i know who it is so i find it even more hilarious yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> she's like right next to you like yeah, right here <laughs> So we were just dying laughing, and for the rest of the trip, that was our catchphrase. Anytime someone did something ridiculous, we're like, what is this atrocity? <laughs> That's so funny that that was his response. Yeah, like, who says that? But it was absolutely hilarious, completely disgusting, but oh, man. God. Yeah, poor guy. He was very unlucky to be the one to pick it that up. Know. Oh, one of the girls left their towels. I'll grab it. At least he didn't, like, pick it up, like, on himself, you Or, know? Like, and, like, sling it. Like, oh, he thought it was full of sand or something. Like, woof! Sling it all over. <laughs> Two-year-old walkie by gets covered in vomit. Oh, man. God, we had so much fun. My group of friends from college is just unreal. We had amazing stories. So the previous year, actually, I don't know why there's a trend with puke here, but... <laughs> Wait, the other one wasn't on the... It was on a different trip. Okay, so this next one I'm about to tell you is on a previous trip. So this was junior year spring break. <laughs> okay, yeah. Also in the Dominican Republic. Fantastic. Fantastic yeah, place. It's Please go vacation there. It's amazing. Um, so we had a super early snorkeling excursion. Mm-hmm. And the night before, I don't know what happened. Like shit hit the fan. We were the definition of atrocity. Okay. Like yeah. everyone was super fucked up. Everyone was blacked out. Like it was just not. I mean, you had a spring break at a resort with all your college <laughs> friends. I mean, yeah. that's to be expected. And not only that, so many other college groups. Oh, of course. Like we met a massive group that year from TCU, mm-hmm. so Texas Christian University. Yeah. And oh my god, we had the best time ever. We were playing drinking games with them. Like we actually knew some of the same people. A few of us. Hi, Kalua. Kalua just bumped the mic right now, trying to butt in. And so um, we had this super early excursion. And only like half of us get up for it. That's a that's a pretty good number. <laughs> it's at like eight a.m. Oh yeah. So you know what, fifty percent, like you should give it to us. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Think about it. You're hungover as fuck, and you're about to go out into the fucking heat. So the anything heat. in the Caribbean around there is uh, closer to the equator. It's way hotter. Oh. It's a hundred percent immunity. <laughs> it's super. So hot. Yeah. And then you're gonna go on a boat. For yeah. those of you who don't get so seasick, any it sucks. Fitness. But then being hung over in that movement, yeah, that's gonna fuck with you. So it was it was not fun to say the least. When we got on the boat, we were all just sitting there in silence. Like not <laughs> don't even talk, saying just anything. Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> I'm fine. And one of the girls, she does get seasick. She does get motion sickness. And so we were all a little worried about her. Does she have the patch or the pill? No. Oh, God. So we go out. We're finally at our snorkeling destination. They're like, everyone get in the water. And I'm doing my own thing because, like, I know how to snorkel. I'm going to do what I want. So yeah. I'm, like, diving T- typically under. Typically when we go do that, uh, groups, they tell you to stay with the group. Our family takes the fuck off because we've been diving our entire lives, been snorkeling everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we're very accustomed with the water and what we can do and our capabilities in the open water. Exactly. And if we see things underwater that we can grab, like we go do that so we can touch it and show our friends. And so I'm doing my own thing, like pretty far behind the group. And then I look up and I see like, oh, they're going that way. So I start to follow. And all of a sudden there is a massive school of fish. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, guys, look at all these fish. 
like I guess they just fed them right here because the the leader what do they call them the, the guides the guys the on guides. the boat that take you out there yeah yeah so they had been feeding the fish like bread and stuff and yes. I don't know if you know what wet crumpled up bread looks like yeah it it's looks uh, just, soggy yeah it looks yeah. nasty so that's what it looks like in the water and I'm mm -hmm. like oh my gosh guys like look at all these fish blah 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 and someone turns around and goes yeah, so and so just threw up right there, and I was like, oh, God damn it. "You're swimming in throw up." <laughs> I'm swimming oh, in the middle of it God. with all the fish around These me. Fish are like swarming me, and I'm like, "Guys, look at how cool!" <laughs> you think you're fucking Ariel, Little Mermaid over there? They love me. They're speaking to me. Oh, my God. I speak their language. <laughs> speak throw up. God, that's fucking gross. They, you know what? They definitely love throw up, though. That's for sure. They do. It's all your nasty food and bile and whatnot. And yeah, they're. <laughs> they, go, they go ham on that. I oh, don't know. Man. That's really funny. So, yeah. Poops, poops. I mean, that's got to be a little bit of... I was thinking further. Skip the gun. I was like, way. what? No, I was going to say, vomit's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> vomit is vomit terrible. Vomit's terrible. Shit's way worse. There's one more. There's one, you know, atrocity up is going to be poo. Oh, poop. for sure. And honestly, I've been trying to rack my brain. I don't think that I have a drunk shit story i, really I have don't. a few of them i know that's scary to me <laughs> yeah one of them you know one of them in our own house wasn't even there for it <laughs> okay so tell that story so this goes back to my good buddy mike and um mike and i were best friends we were thick as thieves as you would say it got in a lot of trouble and always partied together in high school well uh my house was one of the party houses in high school i threw parties there quite frequently um yeah it was just a good time our parents were very okay with us partying as long as it happened under their roof and everyone had keep to stay. an eye on things and nobody could drive after yeah. so senior year i had a lot of parties and everything everyone was always cool to come over but as soon as you drank you are not allowed to leave so yeah. it's like hey you want to come over cool if not can't drink exactly so um uh, like we mentioned earlier a lot of our family lives in the valley in brownsville which is a four-hour drive so we would go there frequently for uh, throughout the year to visit family well one of the times we're going to go down to the valley, my good, fun, my good friend Mike uh, pulls me aside and he <laughs> asks me and kind of convinces me. And he's like, hey, buddy, can you give me your keys so while y'all are down for the weekend, I can bring over a couple girls, a couple guys, drink, have a little thing together. Red flag number two. Yeah. <laughs> Should not trust Mike on that one. But I went against my better judgment. I gave him the key. I said, whatever fucking happens, make sure the house is exactly the way you left it. Yeah. Super clean. You know, don't do anything stupid, bro. Right. So he says, okay, Mike's game. Well, I, uh, we go down to the valley. I have that weekend, and I believe the day we were coming back, I, I messaged him, and he's like, we had a small hiccup, but everything's okay. Everything's okay. I said, all right. So I get back home. Didn't even ask questions. No, I didn't. He said hiccup. We took care of it. Okay. Got you, man. I believe you. Yeah. So we get home, you know, I kind of walk around the entire house and everything looks good to me. It's like, okay, cool. Everything mm -hmm. looks clean. I don't see anything out of place. All right. Later that day, my dad comes up to me and he's like, hey, who's at the fucking house this weekend? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Uh, and he goes, I already know someone was here. I was like, okay, it was Mike and he had some girls and some guys over. He goes, okay. All right. Well, at least you told me. And I was like, well, how do you know? Why do you ask? <laughs> he said, because the downstairs linen closet is entirely rearranged and obviously someone had used all the towels because they had been washed right and folded differently like it's organized differently than yeah. the way i had it i was like okay so you know monday OCD morning over here what yeah the heck? <laughs> but he knew i mean they're just it's obvious if you put everything one way and then it's not like that yeah and it's all the towels true <laughs> interesting so monday morning i uh you know i go to mike and i ask him what happened and it's already all over school <laughs> it's everywhere and just for a reference uh i went to a school here in town that's a private private catholic all-male high school so the thing about that is it's a little bit different than most schools i feel like most schools you hang out with your own group yeah, which is within the like school yeah. but since it's all guys at our school we hung out with um, mainly girls from a lot of other schools right a uh, different variety so not only is it all over our school, but it's already throughout four or five high, high schools about what happened at my, at my house when I wasn't there over the weekend. Well, you weren't even there. So Mike proceeds to tell me he has a few girls over and a few guys, a few of our friends from school. 
Well, he's uh, in the downstairs guest bedroom, and he's messing around with this uh, lovely lady. Let's uh, her name's Megan Fitzpatrick. Shout out to Megan. <laughs> and um, you know they're messing around in the downstairs bedroom. They've been drinking. They're having fun. And all of a sudden, you know, what you don't want to hear when you're hooking up with a chick. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> and he's like, oh shit, oh shit, get up. You don't want to hear that anyways, but True. definitely not while you're hooking up with definitely someone. Definitely not in that moment. <laughs> so he gets up, he, you know, picks her up and they rush into the bathroom, which is right there by the guest bedroom. She proceeds to vomit, vomit, and she threw up on her clothes. Mm-hmm. So she's just like nonstop throwing up and then she, she made a mess on herself. So she gets in the tub and she keeps throwing up. And uh, she throws up on her clothes a little bit. So they're like washing off, but in the tub. And then she's like, stop throwing up and she's okay. But she's like, I don't know if I can move. Like she's, <laughs> she's not doing okay. Not fine. Yeah, not fine. <laughs> so they decide probably the best decision is, hey, are you cool to sit here in the tub for a little bit yeah. until you guarantee you're okay to stand up and move? And we'll bring you water. Well, she passes out in the tub. They're like, okay. That's the best place. Yeah, me. Megan's all right. If she starts puking her brains out again, she's already in the tub. Like, yeah. no problem. So they close the door, and they leave Megan. Well, right outside the guest bedroom and the bathroom was our garage at the time. And we had converted our garage, if you remember, to, like, a little game room. Yeah. So. We painted it with, like, this huge chalkboard wall. Oh, yeah. We, we got, yeah. like, the chalkboard paint. And so anybody that came over to our house would sign it leave messages, whatever. And I think we had to clean it a few times. A few times. There were hundreds and hundreds of signatures and people write notes. Really scary to think about. That's how much we I threw parties in high school, yeah. Yeah. So while he was in high school, I was nine. Ten. ten, Yeah, nine, ten. Nine, yeah. So way too young to have parties. Massive parties. Yeah. So they're all hanging out in the game room for the rest of the night. You know, it's late, late at night, whatever, early in the morning, four or five in the morning. And uh, one of my buddies, George, he uh, needs to go to the kitchen to make himself another drink. He walks out, he's going down the hall, and all of a sudden they hear George scream <laughs> from the garage where they're at. And so they rush out of the garage and he's standing right in the hallway that splits off to the guest bedroom and the guest bathroom. Yeah. And he has just stepped in a log of human feces of poo <laughs> he like barefoot he's holding his foot up like a little kid like ah, ah, yeah. and it, it's squished all in between his toes and his foot is covered in poo oh and they're like what God. the fuck they rush into the bathroom she gone she, <laughs> she gone Megan is not there. Megan is MIA. She is gone. Yeah. Oh my God. They turn around and going into the family room and into the kitchen and towards the front of the house, there's bare footprints of poop. <gasps> black, 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 black. Oh my God, like Squidward walking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But poo poo. Oh so my they God. rush off into the house and they find her uh, near the front door, passed out. With like a trail of poop steps that I guess she ran out of poop and then they didn't see po- footsteps anymore. I'm like, oh my God, where is she? And they found her. So, wow, they got to deal with that. And she was naked, right? And she was naked because they figured out that uh, when she woke up because she washed off all the... Um, all the puke. All the puke. Well, she probably, she shit herself in the tub. So yeah. she took off her clothes so it wasn't, I guess, cake to her. I guess. And fucking took off all wasted. Or maybe she just shit, like, while walking. They, you know what? It remains a mystery. I, <laughs> it remains. She obviously she doesn't remember. She could have taken off her clothes because she was soaking wet. The yeah, clothes. she probably was freezing cold and was like, I want to get into something warm. I want to poop and run. And I, <laughs> shit and sprint. No, you just shit and sprint. So they clean her up. They clean up the entire house. They said they mopped it so many times. Right? So when I get to school, I hear about this, not even from my buddy Mike, from other people already. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it, dude. And so when I went home later that day, I, uh, I kind of walked around the hall, so I <laughs> sniffing everywhere. And, you know, it didn't smell. They did a good job cleaning it. You know, I hope they sanitized the shit out of those towels. I mean, I trust Mike. I believe that he would have taken care of it. I mean, it. yeah. I mean, I... It, Dad didn't know that fucking happened. He just knew that his linen closet was rearranged. So the towels were, yeah. <laughs> so that's happened. But you know what's poor girl? So her last name was uh, Fitzpatrick, and it changed that night and forever. For the rest of high school and in college, she was affectionately known as Shitzpatrick. Oh, my 
my god. And I, I guarantee you, <laughs> no one will ever forget that story about her. Definitely not. Poor girl. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? I mean, shit. Why didn't they take pictures of that? I don't know. I think they were just so worried about cleaning. I know, but can you imagine, like, shit footprints? Oh, I mean, that'd that's, be so yeah. fun. And then leading up to her. <laughs> I mean, it already <laughs> destroyed her reputation. <laughs> I mean, at parties, if she would show up years later, people would be like, Shits! What's up, shitty? Shits Patrick in the house! Like, I mean, this poor girl got it bad. Bad. I mean, it spread through high schools. and Everyone knew her. She was super popular, very attractive, pretty girl. I mean, shitty. Shits Patrick. Shitty. What up, shitty? I mean, sometimes when you fucking, you're that wasted, shit happens. I I guess. That's not that's not even my only story with poop and being drunk. There's a few. There's a, there's a little one. A very short one. Okay. Um, I was working at the bar that I previously worked at. Mm-hmm. And it was the end of the night. And we're doing closing duties. So we tell our bar back that does um, a good majority of the cleaning, cleaning duties to go ahead and start on the bathrooms. We go to the bathroom. It comes out. Fuck that. I'm not cleaning that. <laughs> fuck that. Y'all need to do something. And we're like, what the fuck is your problem, bro? He's like, go to the bathroom. So we walk into the men's restroom. There is one stall and two urinals. Well, sitting in the first urinal is a gigantic turd. Some dude in the you know process of the night somewhere, I, I hope, I mean, I would assume it's at the end of the night. I don't know how he got away with this, by the way. And no one fucking came in and told us. Yeah, I was going to say, if for you to him. shit in a urinal, two side-by-side urinals with no divider in between them. <laughs> Pull down your pants, turn around, face everyone in the restroom, and squat and take a <laughs> shit in there. And clean with what? Wipe with what, bro? I mean, there are other people in there, obviously, because the stall was taken. Yeah. And he had to go. What the fuck? He just sh- uh, the bar back refused to clean it. And this motherfucker <laughs> goes and gets a trash bag and just drapes it over there. <laughs> and then he writes a, a note that says, out of order. And so we like we like called the office and we're like something's wrong with the urinal, and they came in and fucking dealt Are with it. Are you kidding? Yes, he didn't. We're like put. We have gloves on to clean and uh, to like prep food or prep uh, garnishes and fruit yeah. like that. We told him put a glove on and go pick up that turd. You go pick it up with your hand right now. Oh my god! But he refused to. We were just giving a hard time. But yeah, I feel like normal people aren't used to those sort of things. Bartenders see a lot of gross stuff and a lot of surprising things. You know what? In that same bar, that's where there's another stall story. Oh my god, yes. So this okay, happened. mind you, this bar <laughs> is supposed to be it's it's part of a group. There are so many bars um under this owner. And this specific bar, the bar that he worked at, is supposed to be like the nicer of it, I would it say is. all of them. It, it is, is the nicer. For sure. Okay, but then you hear these stories. I mean, <laughs> if these stories are happening in my classy ass bar, I can't even imagine the dumps and the dive bars. I cannot imagine. Because we are nice. We're sitting there. I mean, you can walk in, yeah, you can get a two, three dollar beer, but you can also get a fifteen dollar old fashioned. Yeah. Or a twenty dollar tequila. That's no, not just exactly. nineteen forty two. We're you talking guys some are real like good stuff. Truly mixology. Mixologists. Mixologist. Ca- yeah, you would think classy, but so this happened after I had to um take a leave of absence and stop working at the bar when I got sick. And the other bartender told me what happened. This just a few weeks after he's like, Hey bro, guess what happened the other week? Uh, we had an incident with a regular of ours and let's just call him Tony. I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah, I know Tony very well. What happened with him? Well, he says that, um, (laughs) that he gets a text from Tony like four or five in the morning, like five in the morning. And he's like, Hey bro, I woke up at, at a, at the bar and I was like and, and my buddy he's like what do you mean you woke up at the bar turns out this fucking guy was in the stall of the men's restroom near the end of the night mm-hmm. passed out in there and somehow nobody fucking noticed somehow none of the bartenders went in there and it's important to mention that uh, the bartenders have to clean the restrooms Every night, except for the two nights that there's a cleaning crew for the so busy Friday nights. Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday, cleaning crew comes in and cleans everything. They mop, they sweep, they yeah. they wipe down everything. They actually legitimately clean And they clean come in everything. pretty early. Yes, they come in early in the mornings. Okay. So uh, he fucking fell asleep and nobody noticed. And he said he woke up about 4.35 in the morning in pitch black, <laughs> laying on tile floor 
covered in pee. <gasps> like, they're okay, first off, for bar restrooms, they're fucking gross. Oh, and nasty. I don't know what's up with this because I don't think I've ever done it. Uh, I mean, maybe, but I don't <laughs> recollect. But dudes just piss on the floor. This it's gr- There's so like insane. pee, a puddle of pee. Yeah. And he's laying in it <gasps> for God knows how long he's passed out. At least since two. So at a few least, hours. At least since two, yeah. So he wakes up and it's pitch black. He pulls out his phone, turns on the light, and he's like, <gasps> like, I feel like they're in Saw. Like, <gasps> he wakes up in the restroom, black, like, blacked out. I don't know what the fuck's going on. On the window and lipstick, do you want to play a game? Do you want to play <laughs> on a the game? Mirror? Yeah. He's freaking out, looking around, feeling his way, he pee on the floor, toilet. What the fuck, man? Where am I? And he hears noises. All of a sudden, he hears the door slam open. It's the cleaning crew. <laughs> like five in the morning, lights off. They flip on the lights in the bathroom, and he's like just coming out of the stall. And they're like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Thank God those guys didn't have a gun or something. They would have shot his oh ass. Oh, my God. But, yeah, he's like, uh, 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 and he's like, I'm so sorry, and he just fucking bolts. He, like, runs out the door, and that's when he told my buddy, the other bartender, bro, I fucking woke up in the bar. <laughs> and, he, you know, my buddy, uh, he talked to the other bartender. He's like, did none of us go check the bathroom? So, like, no, we had a cleaning crew. I was like, Nobody had to use the restroom after hours, like, by chance. I was going to say, because I doubt that he even went in there, like, right at 2. Like, I'm sure somebody went in there while he was passed out on the floor. I guess they didn't go. Also, well, I is don't he, know. like, a big guy? Uh, I mean, 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, okay, because I was going to say, if he's, like, a big guy, you'd be able to see him, like, sprawled out on the floor. Oh, the the restroom stall at that bar is very small. You should have fucking seen some legs poking out or something, or a hand, or a fucking head. Something. I mean, I doubt he passed out on the toilet. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe, but at some, when he woke up, he was on the floor. Oh, my God. Face down in pee. First of all, absolutely disgusting. Second of all, I, I still cannot believe that nobody saw him or said something if they did see him. or like, They're like, fuck that guy. He's on his own. <laughs> nobody said anything. That's wild. And he's like a regular, so you think oh, yeah. that a lot of people know him? Oh, oh my for God, sure. I can't even imagine. I literally would wake up and think that I was in Saw. I'd be absolutely terrified. <laughs> Pitch black in the restroom. You're probably still fucked up. Oh my God. It was fucking funny. When he told me that, I couldn't. <laughs> I knew exactly what he was talking about, and the next time I saw him, I gave him shit for it. Oh man. But I mean, hey, sometimes you get fucked up and wake up in weird places. Well, speaking of hiding out. <laughs> <laughs> Brought that up for a reason. Speaking of. So, like I said, I have now been sober for a few months. And I found out that I was not going to be able to drink anymore um, starting um, at the end of October. Yeah. So, the last day that I could drink, I decided to go to the city with one of my best guy friends and we were gonna do bottomless mimosa brunch go to a few bars because it was his girlfriend's friend's birthday so i was just gonna tag along like, all right whatever it's my last out. day to drink yeah yeah so i was like it's my last day to drink like let's fucking go yeah so i was pumped i was mentally so i thought i was mentally prepared and i go not so much not so much so we go, we're having so much fun. We're at a great brunch place, one of my favorites in the city. If you haven't been to it, Haven Rooftop. Fantastic in New York. establishment. Yeah. In New York City, yep. Fantastic establishment. And they have bottomless mimosa brunch on Saturday and Sundays. So we got our bottomless mimosa brunch. Waiter just might as well leave the pitcher because we yeah. are pounding these things. Pounding them back. He comes, fills them up. We chug film right up again. Most of those go down fucking easy. They go down so easy and oh my gosh, we are pounding them. Two, probably three hours rolls by. We're still here. It's a lot of mimosas, yeah. And I am drunk. <laughs> like, oh my god. And my friend is also hammered and he is like three times the size of me. Like, big guy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, if you're fucked up, I don't even Uh-oh. want to know. Yeah, shit. <laughs> Gosh darn it, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. So I'm like, all right, well, like, find out where your girlfriend is and let's go meet her. So then, oh, oh my God, I totally forgot about this. So we're at Haven and then we are waiting on her, his girlfriend to tell us where to go next. 
and she's like oh we're probably going to be about another like 30 minutes and mm-hmm. we're like okay so we head to 235th one of my favorite rooftop bars in New York City as well. Is that well. the one on that TV show in Practical Jokers? Yes. Oh, that is yeah, yeah, a yeah. very cool so looking bar. So, 235th rooftop bar. Very cool. I've taken my mom there to see the Empire State Building. Awesome. Cool bar. So, we head there and we're just sitting on the rooftop like hanging out. We get another drink to pass the time. Let me ask you something. How expensive are the uh, is the cover there? It's a super aesthetically pleasing bar. It looks beautiful. There's not a it's cover rooftop. there. Oh, really? Are drinks expensive? Well, yeah, they're like twelve dollars and up. Okay, so Vegas, New York prices. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So we are at two thirty Feck waiting for his girlfriend. She finally texts, meet us at this bar. Okay, great. We go to this bar, and there's like a super long line. So they're like, never mind, we're going to a different bar. So we go to this other bar. Couldn't even tell you what the name of it was. And You're that fucked up already. I'm drunk i'm just going with the flow at this point like yeah party so we go and they're selling buckets of white claws oh shit yeah get white girl wasted off of my white claws yeah for sure so um, my friend and i we get the bucket and we're splitting the bucket we have to do a tequila shot that's like our thing yeah of course so we do tequila with his girlfriend she loves tequila also so I think we do like one or two tequila shots and then I had one white claw maybe. Okay. So at this point I'm like, I need to go home. I had made a prior engagement back on Long Island and I'm like, all right, I need to go back. I was supposed to go to a haunted house. That night? That night. You've been drinking all day. <laughs> I've been drinking all day. <laughs> okay. It's so gonna be I, scary as shit. So I get in my Uber. My friend sends me on my way. I get in my Uber and I'm like, I am pretty drunk. I'm like, Duh. all right, let's do this. So we get, I get to Penn Station and I am looking at the board full of numbers and letters. <laughs> oh, uh, where the fuck do I live again? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I missed my train by like two minutes. So I call my friend that I'm supposed to meet up with, like what train can I get on and you can come pick me up there Mm -hmm. and he's like oh get on this one I'm like okay got it I see the color I'm like all right that color is what I'm looking for I get on the train I'm there I made it yeah I'm on the train let's let's fucking go yeah I did it how long was the uh, ride supposed to be um it was supposed to be about 30 to 40 minutes okay that's how long First of all, that's how long it is for me to get home from the city okay. um, on the train. And then this one, honestly, it may have even been shorter than that. I don't remember. Um, but he was supposed to pick me up probably in Jamaica. I don't remember which track he was supposed to pick me up at. But I get on the train. I'm like, okay, like it's three stops away, two stops away, whatever mm-hmm. it was. And I'm like, all right, like I can do that. So I'm sitting there, this like man sits next to me, this very old, nice man. And I'm like, oh, hi, blah, blah, blah. We get to chit chatting. And then I wake up. <laughs> and then it all goes dark. I wake up. Mind you, I had worked so much that week. I had worked doubles. I had worked the day before that. Like, I was absolutely exhausted. It was already tiring for me to wake up and go to the city that morning uh in the hospital what is a double shift like the hours a double shift is seven to eleven. Oh shit okay so it's like, so like 16 hours yeah so it they're long shifts and then you, normally i work seven to three so an eight hour shift mm-hmm. which it's nice because you get home at three etc but at the same time it's just absolutely exhausting like the work that i do whenever I am there yeah it's just oh my gosh not only is it physically exhausting but it's so mentally exhausting yeah. sometimes like dealing with not only my fellow co-workers but also with all the patients like and then let's say something goes wrong that day with one of the patients like it takes its toll on you for sure so that week I had had such a shitty week I was really looking forward to going to the city that day but I woke up and I was like oh my god I'm dead like oh my gosh so all of these factors were playing into one i'm drunk two i am absolutely exhausted like Mm -hmm. a zombie and so i wake up on the train 
um, the conductor comes over. Ma'am, this is the last stop. You have to get off. I'm like, okay, no problem. Like, oh my gosh, wiping my eyes. No, wiping my eyes. I get off the train. It is a fucking ghost town. It is pitch black outside. My phone is dead. And I'm like, where the fuck am I? Like, wait a second. And I'm looking around for literally anybody. Anybody. My friend was supposed to pick me up at a station. Yeah. And I finally find this old couple. And I'm like, can I please borrow your phone? Like, my phone died. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah. So I didn't have my friend's number memorized, obviously. So I logged into my Facebook. Oh, okay. I was like, how the fuck? Okay. Happened to glance at the time. I got on the train about 7. Okay. And you said like 7.30? You're supposed to be there? Yeah. And it is 10.30 at night. Oh, my God. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, I probably have a search party out for me right now. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my gosh. And at this point in time, like, I had never felt more sober in my life. I was like, where the fuck am I? I need to get home. How do I, like, get a hold of my friend? Also, I just got a bomb ass nap in. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, because you slept for three fucking hours. Okay, yeah, I slept for three hours. So I'm like, okay, Presley, like, focus. Sights are on now. Find this couple, glance at the time. It is 10 30. Fuck, I'm going to be in so much trouble. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I log into my Facebook. I call my friend through Messenger. Mm-hmm. Thank God he picks up. He's like, where the fuck are you? I have called the police. Oh, I have had so shit. many stations like looking for you, blah, 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 like trying to track my phone. My phone is obviously it's dead. It's dead. And yes. I'm like, well, I'm in Ronkonkoma, which is... Where? What the what the fuck is that? <laughs> Ronkonkoma. Ronkonkoma? Yeah, so I live in Port Washington on Long Island, which is pretty dead center, but extremely North Shore. And <laughs> Ronkonkoma is way east Long Island, over by the Hamptons, Montauk, like over Huntington, like over on that end of Long Island. And it is the last stop on this fucking train. Before what? Canada? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> three hours from New York? No, you're still on Long Island. Oh, my God. Like, you're still there. And obviously, the train takes a lot longer to get there, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it stops but and the way it goes. Yes. Exactly. And then, usually, at the larger stations, so, like, at Jamaica, at, there's another one, I forget the name, but sometimes they have, like, little layovers mm-hmm. for, okay. to wait for the next trains and stuff like that. It's a connecting station. Makes sense. So I'm in Ron Kongama. Friend, come get me in Ron Kongama. Save me. I am so terribly sorry. Holy shit. And he's like, okay, like I'm on my way. Like it'll take me like an hour to get there. Jesus Christ. You had to drive an hour? And I'm like, fuck. Okay. Like I'm so sorry. And I couldn't even like order an Uber. I couldn't get anything because my phone dead. was dead. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my Lanta. I didn't have, like, any cash on me. I had my card, my ID, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't even go and, like, use a payphone to call a cab or anything. Like, I did not know what to do. Yeah. And so, thankfully, there's a Dunkin' Donuts. And I'm like, okay, I'll go sit in the Dunkin' Donuts until he gets here. Like, I'll Mm -hmm. be safe in there. So I go. I'm sitting there. um, Grab a little snack. (laughs) And I... (laughs) So I'm sitting there, mind you, I hadn't eaten since noon that day. So I'm like, all right, let's grab a little snacky snack. And then I just, I'm sitting there waiting. 15 minutes goes by. Uh, ma'am, we're closing. God damn it. Oh, (laughs) shit. You're going to have to get the fuck out. Oh, my God. So I'm freaking out. I'm like, okay, I have to go sit outside in the freezing cold yeah. it's like 40 degrees outside i don't have a jacket oh like shit. that day in new york it was like in the 60s mm-hmm. so it was super nice outside i have a light sweater on I'm did chilling. not prepare did, did not, not expect prepare. for this did happening. not expect this at all so i am um now you know sitting outside next to this what i can only assume is a hooker next to me <laughs> and i'm like can I borrow your phone? <laughs> the hookers have phones? Yeah, she had a phone. <laughs> and she was like, of course. I'm like, oh, God bless your soul. So now I'm using this hooker's phone. And um, 
you know, I'm calling my friend and he answers. I'm like, how far are you? And he's yeah. like, I am working on it. I was like, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Like, I'll wait here. Okay, like, I'm right next to the hooker. <laughs> I'm like, I'm outside. I'm waiting. What car are you in? And she, he's like, this, 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 and this. Okay, give the hooker back her phone. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, well, this is it. <laughs> this is how I die. This is how I die. I have my keys on me, thank God, with my hef- with my uh, nifty little pepper spray. So I got my pink pepper spray in one hand. I have like another key in another. So I'm like, I'm fucking ready. Let's shake go. Shake someone and spray them. No, him. actually, I have my pepper spray in one hand and I had my taser, taser there you in go. the other. So I was like, all right, if anyone wants to come try, let's fucking go. <laughs> If you're literally sitting there holding them in your hands, I doubt very many people are going to attack you. I don't know, but I need to You're sitting be, there ready holding it like, what, bitch, you want some? I needed to be prepared. Anybody that was walking up to me was either getting pepper sprayed in the face or tased yeah, or both. What time was it? You said like 1030? Well, by the now time 11, Now it's like 11, 1130. Yeah, the Dunkin' Donuts closed at 11. There you go. So, so real late at night, drunk. Fucking stranded out there. Stranded. No in the phone. the freezing cold. Nobody to even talk to. I you can't got your even, hooker like, friend. But... Play games on my phone. Like I'm. That's just... that was your concern at that point. No, I'm just <laughs> saying, like to pass the time. <laughs> yeah, you just have to sit there and be like, oh, fuck, and in cold too. And Super in the cold. cold. So I'm literally sitting there listening to this hooker's conversations of her pimps. I don't know. So I'm just like hanging out, and what do you know? I see some headlights roll around. That's not his car. Fuck. Okay, keep waiting. Yeah. <laughs> 15 minutes later, oh my god, more headlights. <gasps> it's him. God bless his soul. So I hop in the car and I am like sobbing at this point, uncontrollably sobbing, because I'm like, one, I am so fucking sorry. Yeah. Like, oh my god, unbelievably sorry. And on top of that, I was actually really scared. For sure, you should have been. Like, to be sitting outside by myself in the freezing cold next to somebody that I don't know. I'm like, all right, well, like, never fucking do that again yeah you have no clue where you are also in new york i have just recently moved there obviously and uh i still don't know the train system very well is it confusing or are you just not memorizing it no it is confusing especially to people who don't know it yeah i mean here in in san antonio and in texas too we don't have that kind of public transportation yeah we like public transportation really isn't a thing we have buses and that's it Mm -hmm. And so, for me, it was something really different, and I was like, okay, like, fuck, I should never get on a train that I don't know ever again. Yes. Like, regardless. And so, that was it, and I cannot think, (laughs) this guy is now my boyfriend, so. (laughs) I was going to say, you kept saying friend, but I was like, oh, he wasn't your boyfriend at the time. He wasn't my boyfriend at the time. Now he is my friend. Persistence is key, guys, (laughs) but... If a guy does that for you and goes and picks you up an hour away, yeah, <laughs> you lock that guy in because you were two hours into like becoming a hooker next to your friend Sally over oh there. Oh my god, I still to this day cannot believe the story. It gives me anxiety to think about it because it was terrifying. So, uh, how did that conversation go with mom? Okay, so I call mom. I'm in the car. I am hysterically sobbing, and she no first she texts me because I plug my phone in mm. in his car. And um, finally, it turns on my mom. I have a lot of, like, missed texts. Obviously, a ton of missed calls from my friend. Mm -hmm. And I finally text her back, like, just got in the car. And she's like, oh, my God, how'd it go? I was like, not well. (laughs) Not fine. So she texts, or she calls me, and she goes, what's going on? And I'm sobbing. I'm very, very upset. And she's like, oh, my God, what happened? So I told her. I was like, I fell asleep on the train. Like, I'm not okay. (laughs) And I told her that my friend had been looking for me for three hours. Like, yeah. I was literally off the face of this planet. And she was like, oh, my gosh. Like, you need to calm down. Like, get home, whatever. And um, just kind of relax. And I was like, okay. And then, obviously, she asked me. She's like, were you super drunk? And I was like, I was drunk. Yes. But it was not a good combination to be as exhausted as I was yeah. and as drunk as I was. Like, it just did not work for me, obviously. Um, and so, mom, I guess, tells you? Well, no. I don't even... That, uh, it was in the morning. She didn't tell me that night. Mm. She, uh, I, I spoke to her and she had for sure a tone behind her when she's like, have you spoken to your sister? <laughs> I was like, no, why? And she goes... 
did she not tell you what happened and what she did? And I was like, no. So I was like, what are you going to fucking tell me? And so she tells you what happens, and, and she was very upset and mad. I was going to say, I got a very stern talking to. As funny of a story as this is, I learned a huge lesson, and this will yeah, never happen I again. Yeah, I mean, super dangerous. Yeah. Female, so alone, scared. stranded. Yeah in, yeah, in a city that I really don't know. No, for like, sure. I don't know Long Island whatsoever. So she tells me all that, and I, I agree with her. And, and every one of the... Um, the safety points what she was talking about i was like for sure yeah I, I agree with you but you know it happened you got there you're safe you know you know there's not much to do after that except for go make some bomb ass memes <laughs> and make fun of you so my mom's telling me the story and i'm just like in my mind my mind's my, my wheels are already turning <laughs> what can i do with this information to make fun of what she just did oh my god so i go and i make a whole bunch of memes these, and I, I'm very proud of these memes. Mind you, the next morning, I'm still, like, very traumatized. Thank God I didn't have work the next day. I was still so, so traumatized. And I'm just, like, kind of sitting in my bed in my apartment. I'm like, all right, Presley, you need to reflect on your life. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I done fucked up. I done really fucked up. And then I was like, wait a second. That was my last night of drinking. For a long time. So no more fuck-ups for Presley for a while. For a minute, yeah. <laughs> for a hot minute. And then did your phone go bling, 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 And bling. then all of a sudden, I get a text from my brother, who I have not spoken to yet. Yeah, you had, Mind we, you. We had not spoken a we word. We <laughs> had not spoken for a reason, because I knew, I knew that I would never be able to live this down. And I was like, I need enough courage in myself to tell him about this. And also, he's probably going to yell at me because... For sure. What she did was super was unsafe. so unsafe. Yeah. And uh, so all of a sudden, bling, bling, bling. And I'm like, what? what's that? And I see like seven or eight memes of me. <laughs> of me. I spent that entire morning making... As soon as my mom told me information, I went to my room and started memeing. And so... For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, we're for sure going to put the pictures up and you'll see them in this video. For those of you listening, these are the memes that I remember that I made and they match the pictures exactly. <laughs> so the first one, for those of you who are Harry Potter fans, it's a picture of the uh, of platform nine and three fourths. Three quarters. Three quarters from Harry Potter. And the words say, time Presley missed the train to Hogwarts. When? To Ron Concoma instead. Ron Concoma. How, how do you say that? Ron Concoma is how I'm going to say it. How, what is it? Ron Concoma. Ron Concoma. When to Ron Concoma instead. <laughs> the next was the front of the Ron Concoma's train station, and it says, Presley, hide and seek champion 2019. <laughs> I thought that one was really brilliant. You hide, you woke up, we, no one knew where the fuck you were. I won. I won. I, I won at a hide and seek guy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, you know that old school movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? Well, I stuck Presley's face in there, and I crossed everything out, so it just said, Presley Price in Trains. <laughs> crossed out the airplane, crossed out the automobiles. There was another one that I did that, uh, it was a picture of either Back to the Future 2 or 3, where it's a train that flies, and it says the nap that lasted so long, Presley ended up in the future. <laughs> And then I think my favorite one was, um, for those of you who are big Friends fans out there, our family, we, we watched oh, it we growing up friends. a lot. We had like the Friends trivia game. Yeah. Like... My mom got us into it for sure. So yeah. we watched a lot of Friends. Uh, there's one episode where Ross, the, one of the characters in the show, he falls asleep on the train and he misses all his exits or all the stops just like Presley did. Well, he wakes up and he's in fucking Canada. Yeah, he's dating a girl in upstate New York. That's what happens. Yes. And he gets on the train to go meet her. And she's at the train station and she sees him knocked out in his seat. And she's like, Ross, Ross, Ross. Well, the train goes on by and, and he just wakes, up wakes up in Canada. Yeah. In Canada. So I, I, that exact scene, I, I took a picture of it. And then I just put, uh, I think, the time that Presley went to Ron Konkuma. Yep. Because the title of that episode is... The, the time Ross went to Canada, Canada or something, or yeah. Whatever it was, yeah. And then one of my favorites, he did a picture of what was that? Tommy the Choo Choo. Thomas train? the Train. Thomas the Train, that yeah. one. And he put he put sunglasses on him with like a cigarette in his mouth. It was a joint. And it, oh, okay, a joint in his mouth, and it goes, I, 
I didn't choose the chug life. The chug life chose me. <laughs> That's, I like that one. I didn't choose a chug life. Chug life chose me. <laughs> that one was one of my favorites. So, again, some pretty fucking wild drunk stories. You, you know what? That's not even... I would say that's maybe a half of the real good oh, ones we have. Oh, maybe. We have so many, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Drinking a lot leads to crazy and stupid decisions. Absolutely. For sure. 100% stupid, unsafe decisions. Yeah. But in the end, we are here. <laughs> you know what? Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll notice three new people standing behind us at the bar. Our friends. Those are some uh, very interesting men. Each of those, I have definitely stolen and jacked in hilarious ways from different bars because they're like promotional <laughs> things jacked yeah. them and ran away maybe got banned a few times but we'll we'll include those on the next time we talk about some more drunk stories yep and our drunk tank round two episode For sure. part two drunk tank is gonna be good <laughs> so we were exposed to alcohol i guess when we were very young only because our families yeah everyone's big drinkers our family drank a lot and like our extended family everything we were always around their parties when i was eight we got our first dog named after alcohol martini oh yeah the so Shih Tzu. that's where the trend started yeah if you haven't noticed when we've spoken about our dogs this one's mimosa the mastiff is kalua my big boy is uzo the pomeranian is scotch we have a cat named bombay i've had gimlet stoli tequila saki sky stella, yeah stella had a lot of pets and they're all named after booze the steak was midori oh yeah the steak was midori Cavassier, we hennessy cabo wabo cabo wabo the other cat yeah. yep tito we've had a few but yeah so our family enjoys the occasional drink so all two. those stories are not our fault <laughs> yeah i agree not our fault but um i remember when i was really really young i think i was in third grade maybe so like eight years old are I you think talking we're... about what are you talking about i'm talking about the water bottle yeah you're in second or third grade so you're I was super in young or third grade yes. and i had a friend over we're playing at my house whatever like casual little play date well while she's leaving um her mom is here to pick her up and she goes oh do you have any water bottles which why this didn't cross my mind i don't know our family does not use water bottles. No, like we drink we, out of the fridge. Yeah. yeah, we have never been water bottle people, but there was a water bottle, what do you know, sitting in the fridge. And I was like, oh my gosh, here. Gave it to her and she walks to the front door. She starts drinking it and she goes, mom, this water tastes really funny. And she's like, oh, it's probably fine, whatever. And she goes, no, like really funny. And my mom goes, Presley, where'd you get that water bottle? I was like, oh, it's just sitting in the fridge. At like at the same time, my friend's mom drinks, takes a sip of it, and she spits it out, and she goes, "That's vodka." <laughs> <laughs> That's straight fucking vodka. That's vodka. And my mom was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." That's <laughs> like, hey, see, case in point, not our fault. That's why was that in there? I, oh, from the cruise. Yeah, no, no, it was no, no, from no. the cruise. No, we lived in this house in the cruise. I was in eighth grade when we went on the cruise. You're right. Yeah, so I don't know, but that comes to another there, story. There is a point that there, for some reason there my parents were bottle. taking alcohol <laughs> where alcohol was not allowed, and they had a water bottle and filled it up with <laughs> fucking vodka. So if anybody has been on a cruise, we went on a cruise when I was in eighth grade, or the summer after eighth grade, and you're only allowed a certain number of cases of soda you're allowed a case of water and you're allowed a few bottles of wine yes. i don't know what the exact um, yeah what i think different ones you, but it's, it's, yeah. yeah what the exact quantities are but my family <laughs> my mom decided to take every water bottle out of that case and fill it with vodka and rum white rum and white rum yeah. because on cruises there's not all-inclusive cruises guys so you have to pay for all your drinks and your food yeah. at dinner and at, on the cruise they, they offer packages but they're not truly all-inclusive it'll tell you it's unlimited but really the way they rate them it's like 15 drinks yeah. Day. And you know, for normal people, that might be fine. But when we go on vacation, we but booze. for the prices, it's fifteen drinks not is fine. like by lunch. I'm done. I'm like, bro, that's not that's ain't gonna fucking cut it. So mind you, 
I was in eighth grade, so I did not drink at this time. So it was literally my brother, his girlfriend, and my parents, and all of this alcohol. Oh, and my dad does drink. So all this alcohol yeah. was for you, my mom, and your girlfriend. Yeah. So the entire case of water bottle is vodka or white rum. We don't know where the line stopped, but whatever. And then on top of that, they obviously took advantage of whatever wine or beer that they were allowed to take. I don't think we were allowed to bring beer. Okay, so wine. Mm -hmm. And then my mom comes up with this brilliant idea. Actually, I don't even know if it was mom or dad, but they come up with this brilliant idea to wash out mouthwash bottles. And so we have like four or five mouthwash bottles just like soaking to get all the mouthwash out of it. And then my mom... I think we just rinsed them out a few times. <laughs> we did soak them. <laughs> okay, that's even worse. Yeah, it's like, whatever, it's fucking alcohol. <laughs> it is alcohol. So then all the alcohol is just going to taste minty as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so then they filled all of the mouthwash bottles with white rum and vodka yeah. and put food color yeah. in it to make it look like mouthwash. It works 100%. And it, it 100% works. worked. And my mom had all the mouthwash in her bag and I was like, Mom, aren't they going to ask why you have five bottles of mouthwash? We're very, we're very sensitive about our uh, dental, dental hygiene. Dental hygiene. Yeah. And she was like, I have a condition. I was like, a Condition? Okay. I need a lot of mouthwash. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, they definitely, we would always hide them. So that's basically how, not even how we were introduced, but... Not our fault. It's not Honestly, our fault. we are the result of yeah, exactly. some of those instances. But we'll... Uh, Drunk Tank Part 2, we'll get into more stories for sure, guys. Absolutely. So that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed our episode of Drunk Tank. And we can't wait to see you guys for our next episode next Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for listening. Again, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe, like, comment on our video on um, our previous episodes. And then if you are listening on iTunes, subscribe and rate, please, please, please. And a huge shout out once again to our intro and outro bands. Our intro. Our intro is Saltwater Slide. They're a local band here in San Antonio. They're a fun group. They're real chill vibe. Uh, all their music music puts me in a good mood. You guys should definitely check them out. Um, yep. They're a bunch of good guys and their music is kick ass. Yeah, fantastic guys. Our outro is by Love Killed the Hero. So damn nice. Check out their tiny desk submission video. And that's it for this week. All right, guys. See you all next time.